Hello attendees. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to uh, do a quick sound check. Could everybody indicate by using the chat button in your top right hand corner that you can hear me OK whilst we wait for a few more people to join us? Excellent, excellent. We've got a couple of people coming through loud and clear. Brilliant, that's what I like to hear. OK, so thank you, everybody, and thank you for joining our sixth webinar. Uh, today, we are focusing on our smart solutions, the forms extension pack. Your host today, uh, Tiago Bruno, and myself, I'm Tracy Adams, Sales and Marketing Manager for Enbridge Consulting. If you have a, a question throughout the webinar, please use the chat and we will pick these up at the end of the webinar in our question and answer session. If we can pick them up, uh, we will certainly try and do so throughout the webinar. So do keep those questions coming along. For those of you that are returning um, to, uh, to one of our webinars, then um, I'll keep this brief. And um, just to give you a brief overview of our services, as most of you are aware, we're a Unit 4 partner. And we provide a multitude of services across um, the spectrum, managed ERP, project management, business systems training, obviously Unit 4 Business World Consultancy, uh, system selection. Um, today, you're going to hear about our smart solutions. As you're aware, we've been a Unit 4 partner now and we've been providing consultancy since 2009. And our smart solutions has grown from a desire to provide our customers with packaged solutions delivering really great results without the expense of, of complex bespoke customization. Obviously, Tiago will run over these very shortly. Now, I just want to double check with you um, what your reasons are today for, for joining um, the webinar. Maybe you want to know a little bit more about the smart solutions. You may want to, to know a little bit more about the forms extension pack. Uh, but just pop um, your answers uh, in the chat button for me. I'll give you a couple of moments. Uh, just to, to do that. Okay, um, so we've got a couple of questions here. People are assessing whether or not uh, it's suitable for their organisation. And um, how it can actually be used um, in their own environment and to know how that they can improve uh, implementation, how they can improve processes, um, and also how they can um, increase um, effectiveness within the team. So we've got quite a few really good uh, reasons for, for joining. And of course, the key thing is the ability to automate processes. Thank you for that. So, um, yeah, we've got some really, really good questions there. So what will you get from today's webinar? Um, Tiago will outline the, um, the FEXP, which we've shortened, forms extension pack uh, to FEXP. Um, Tiago will outline that solution, providing an understanding of, of how uh, that extension pack can automate everyday processes. Um, so they will actually explain a little bit more about that um, and we'll, we'll answer some of your questions if you've got specific questions. So before I drone on any longer, let me pass you over to Tiago, who will be able to um, take you through the demonstration. Uh, so over to you, uh, Tiago. Um, okay. I'm just I'll... swapping the presenter. There we go. Okay. Hello, everyone. I hope uh, everyone can hear me. I'm just going to share my screen so you guys can see my presentation. 
Okay, I hope everyone can see my screen now. Okay, so um, like uh, Tracy said, our uh, form extension pack is, is, is done in our smart solution department. So basically our smart solution is our tiny kind of development uh, team that always tries to go to the uh, extra mile on, on business world. So um, we end up doing our uh, business world customizations on ACT, which, uh, you know, we did all the, uh, all the, all the courses and we have all the, the credentials so we can start, um, so we can provide that. We have, um, you know, our, our stuff prepared um, and, and ready to deploy. And not just from the development point of view, but also from the maintenance and, and, and you know, preparing and supporting everything after that. Uh, we end up using existing uh, business world um, logic, has you know batch input processes, the web services, the data loaders. So we always try to um, to run away as possible um, from the um, from the direct insert tables uh, and from my inserts and updates directly in the tables, uh, so we can maintain the integrity of the uh, of, of of the system. So a little bit more of the smart solutions we have. We have the SharePoint connector, which is a, a bespoke uh, document system uh, in the document archive in which you can uh, have a two-way um, document archive uh, between your um, business world and the SharePoint. If you end up uh, using or having a, a Microsoft Azure SharePoint, being it on premises or even um, on, on Microsoft 365. We have uh, the action overview extension we did for a customer, which uses action overview to, to follow up, to do that chasing, but there were some fields that they want to log. There were some others they want to make mandatory, you know, basically some of the stuff that Windows option cannot reach. So we, we add a little bit more of logic. We have a timesheet import, which end up being, um, uh, there's a legacy system that ends up throwing out uh, a CSV file with some information for timesheet, and we have a bespoke server process that ends up using some web service. So basically, it just picks that CSV file with timesheet information, just loads it. Um, we have a stock take uh, on the web because until now, um, uh, Unit 4 doesn't have a stock take screen for the web, so we only have it on desktop. Uh, and this, uh, and what we're going to talk today is the, um, the business world form extension pack in which what you're going to see it's going to be quite simple most of the most of the steps are going to be standard so the trick is going to be on the server on the server on this bespoke server process that ends up giving us a lot of what we can we can do and um, and then there's your choice so if you end up having something that you guys want us to uh, either to build or to do or something that you think um, that, you know, on your systems, you end up having 95% of, of, of what you need, but then there's that 5% that needs to be tweaked. So that's where we, that's where we enter. Okay. So, okay. So the um, business world form extension pack. So standardly uh, on Aggresso, we can create a form. You can populate a form. The form can go on the workflow. And you can even kick the workflow to send, to start, you know, standard server process with Intel agent. So you can have an Intel agent to query the information from the form. And then you can, you know, you can trigger standard server process, you know, because in the Intel agent, you just make a query, pick the information that you have on the form. Um, and then you use it to pass as a parameters. Now, some of the limitations, well, the limitation of the form itself, so the form is, is, is kind of a dead end, so it doesn't do anything by itself, so we actually have to use the intelligent. Um, but when you use standard processes, you kind of get the form limited to the, the parameters that you want to use for those standard processes. Um, so either you, you know, you end up being limited to the parameters of those standard process when you want to pass information, or you can use some AG16, which end up being complex. It might be get long. You have to do direct inserts on the database, which might, uh, which might, you know, uh, do, you know, might do some harm on the integrity of the information. And even because right now, we, we, we've been informed from Unit 4 that all the, uh, all the Unit 4 um, cloud solutions uh, are going to, they're going to be really, really restricted on AG16. They're actually thinking and withdrawing the capacity of using AG16s, uh, substituting that with ACT solutions, which, which end up needing a little bit of more consistency and dynamism. 
Okay, so where we sit is on the bespoke server processes. So if you have all these uh, forms, you know, you create the form, you populate the form, the form made on workflow, then you have an intel agent picking the information from the workflow. And then we can create or we create bespoke server processes. So <clears throat> right now the form extension pack already has two, which is the leavers date when someone just populates a form saying that someone's going to leave. And then after that being um, approved, fully approved, uh, we can use that information to change the date to uh, from the uh, resource master file. So it's the lever date. And the other one that we're going to show is the, the position um, updating or changing the position, uh, inserting a new or updating an existing position on the position uh, register master file. Um, but there are other options that we can create right now. We are using right now. We are, we are working on um one solution that a lot of customers end up asking and even uh, our guys internally in in enbridge ask for a movers for a starters movers and levers which end up being like a a form in which we end up having a lot of information and after that being uh populated and approved we can kick the process for the new user which end up being uh populating a user master file the resource master file the supplier uh so there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of options in here so this is where we end up centering our own our our solution, which uh, you know the, the trick in here end up being the bespoke server process in the end that we can call. So um, we in, 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 in all these options that we can have as long as we have the business not as long as we have the business logic behind being it you know um, uh, the, the batch input uh, um, inserters, uh, the importers, or the web services, or the data loaders. So this, the example that we're going to see today, is is basically where we create the form, we populate the form, um, the form goes on workflow, and then IntelliJ is going to pick up the information from that, and it's going to call uh, the IntelliJ is going to call a bespoke server process, and then it's going to create a new um, position. Uh, with some relation values, so uh, I'm just going to jump to the uh, to the demo. Okay, I hope everyone can hear me, and that I'm live and well with everyone. Okay, so let's jump for the demo. Okay, so um, I'm just going to log in here on my um, on my. Um, ABW business world and I'm just going to create uh, a quick and simple simple form so this is going to be a form that uh, is going to go on on workflow okay so this is going to be a form that I'm going to create so I'm going to create the attribute and I'm going to create the flexi field because this is how we end up creating the um, the form with some um, with some flexi field groups now in here to ease the task of the user that it's uh, populating the form um, uh, the form is already having some attributes that end up being connected with the position master file and and some you know default values you know for the yes no's new updates you know the the status um, uh, values so that the user can have a more user friendly um, a more user friendly experience Okay, now this form is going to go on workflow. So this is going to be a simple position form. So right now we're going to use like a really simple workflow. So the position goes, uh, the, 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 the form goes to workflow and someone's going to approve it. And then we're going to do something about, well, the intelligence is going to do something for us. Okay, so I'm going to exit from here now and I'm going to open my business world in which I'm going to log in in here. And okay, I'm a user. I'm using aggressive demo. I'm going to go to my forms, which is in here, still on my common. And okay, forms position. Okay, so I'm going to create, I'm going to create a new request, a new position form. I'm going to populate uh, a quick description. So it's going to be a new position for Sally. Okay. Is it going to be a new or update an existing one? So, okay. So it's going to be a new position. Uh, okay. I'm going to put some relation values as well. Uh, since it's a new position, well, I'm going to have to do some, uh, create some, 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 some uh, key values in here, which is going to be the position ID and the position description. 
okay, I'm going to put some position codes. So these are all kind of the mandatory fields that we need to populate on the position master file. It's going to be permanent. Let me put a scale ID in here. Okay, the variant, the wage rule ID, and the part-time percentage, 100%. Okay, just saying that the status of position is N. And I'm going to give a date from and a date two for this position, starting in the beginning and ending in the end of the year. Okay, now I'm going to add a position, a, rela a position relation value. Okay, so I'm going to put some date froms in date two, and I'm going to put the relation attribute ID. Now I'm just going to go here to my Aggresso desktop on the position administrator administration and register and just going to check an existing one to see which relations I have so basically what we've been populating in the form uh, end up being you know all these uh, values that we need to populate in here so it's quite obvious now just a relation okay in here I can see that I have you know cost center and resno and job type and uh, okay cool so I'll um, I'll just uh, I'll just populate the relations in here with the relation values and the flags, and I'm going to say that the status is uh, is is this one. Okay, so I populated in here too. I actually left this one, so C zero uh, end up being the Resno is C one was supposed to be the cost center. So I just I actually populate this um, wrongly, so you can see that in the end when the uh, when the bespoke server process does uh, the insertions, uh, it actually does the validations. So in here I have my form and I'm going to submit the form. Okay, so it's going to be ready to send to approval. So until now this is just simple form going to workflow. Right now I'm just here with my um, another user and I'm just going to, need to approve. And okay, so right now what we have is a fully approved form. Now the other standard thing ended up being uh, an Intel agent. Okay, so this Intel agent is going to have a really simple, well, not simple, but it's going to have a query looking at all the finished tasks for that specific element type and looking for new items. And well, what it's going to do is actually kick our bespoke server process. So in here, I can see that, all right, so it's going to be the, the, the one on the top. So it was already picked up and it's already done. It was already called. So uh, if I just check the log of the, of the server process, I can see in the log that uh, my uh, my form extension pack my form extension um, solution in this case pop, uh, in this case the um, the position master file uh, server process end up working. So I can see in here that okay, I'm creating new position in relations value, and I was able to create a new position. Save okay, I save uh, uh, one relation value, but this one end up failing. Okay, now if I um, if I just check the form, so basically, so basically in here we end up having a bespoke server process, and a bespoke server process need to be hanged as well on the uh, on on aggressor. So what, what the Intel agent basically is doing is doing a, a query on the uh, on the information that it's on the form, and then it's just populating all these fields in here in the parameters. So the the cool thing in here is that we if we create a bespoke server process so that we can then trigger extra logic uh we can create our own parameters we have our own stuff to then call the other business logic now if this is right now i'm using uh, i'm using uh, the the position um web service in which I end up needing some fields so i'm just passing that information to here and, and you know my bespoke a server process just calling the web service with the information that it's that it's on here and that's what then um, gets my uh, my my position register populated with the correct information and and with the relations uh, as well. So you can see in here we populated the one in the middle. The other one failed, so it wasn't populated. And um, we we populated this with no intervention of, of uh, in the database level. So there was no inserts, no updates. So we actually consumed the, the web service. So just to show you where the web service is, uh, we have this web server on the web server list. So we have several web servers that you can use, you know, for the um, for projects and timesheets and suppliers and all that. So we're actually using the position uh, master file that allows us to create and update existing existing positions.
Okay, so the trick on this end up being uh, the trick on this end up being the bespoke server process. So we are now uh, uh, topping up our from extension pack, which already have the leave uh, the leavers end date. It has the uh, position um, the position. Uh, um, extension pack, well, the, the, the position to add or update existing positions. We are working on the uh, um, starters, movers, and levers, which is something that a lot of people end up asking. Um, but if you guys end up having your own forms that goes on the workflow, so if you have your forms already done, and if you think, okay, I have my form already done, I can create an intelligent to pick up that information. Then we just need to actually create the bespoke server, server process and check if there's logic to do the rest of the action that you guys want. So if you guys have, you know, uh, the, you know, a form that ends up uh, doing something like, I don't know, you might have, um, um, uh, I was thinking some 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 forms in which you end up populating information, let's say for purchase orders or for uh, or for requests or requisitions, and then you want something to be done after that or be created or updated or whatever. So the trick in here end up being in the in the in the server process. Okay, I, I'm going to hand over now to uh, to uh, to Tracy, which um, is going to lead the um, the Q and A session. I'm going to try to see if I can answer. Um, if I can answer the questions that uh, I think it was pretty obvious that the trick in here is the, the, the server process. So a, a lot of the stuff ended up being uh, standard. So I'm just going to hand over to Tracy now and um, and see if we can capture all the questions and see if we can answer everything that you, uh, that you have. Tracy? Tiago, thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, I hope everybody can hear me again. Um, so we're just going to hand over to the question and answer session. So after that presentation, do you have any questions with regard to what you've just seen? Is there any particular aspects that you are um, looking for or considering? I'll just give you a moment or two just to, uh, to pop in your chat box any questions that you might have. Okay, we've got uh, a question here uh, with regard to uh, starters, movers, and levers functions. If we have a time scale on, uh, on on building this, I assume this is the the question. Well, we are working on this right now, uh, and uh, I can say that in in the next couple of months or in the next month or so, we end up having some uh, a bit more on this. Okay, we've got a another question with regard to if documents are attached to a form, can the documents be attached to the master file where it is transferred? Okay, now that's uh, that's um, that's a nice question. It's um, well, the goal in here was only to pass the information, you know, the strings or the information inside the fields from one place to the other. But if I do a bespoke server process, or well, if on the Intel agent, I pass the information from one place uh, to another, the strings, the information in the fields, we do have a DSO1, which is, um, DSO1 is, the, uh, is a server process that um, copies or moves uh, document archive information from one doc type to the other. Now, uh, Either we can, uh, yeah. So either we can individually pass some 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 documents from one place to the other. So, or we can use this server, this server, this DSO one server process to do that. So I think we can attach. The cool thing in here is that we have different elements in Aggresso in which we uh, customizations and with ACT you can just link everything on the back. So yeah, I think uh, either either with the Intel agent calling both processes like the bespoke server process to pass the data from the fields to the master file and calling the SO1, which end up moving or copying the information from a, data, a doc type to the other. And there you will have uh, the information move from one place to the other. So either one way or the other, because we do have um, 
a document archive web service. So we can um, copy or move the information from one place to the other. So I think it is possible technically. Uh, I, I, I don't know what would be the approach. We would have to do some analysis, but yeah, I think it would be possible to do that. Thanks, Tiago. We've got another question coming up. Um, is this capability a standard off-the-shelf Agresso module or an Enbridge development? Sorry, I'm, I'm not seem to... Uh... Okay, the capability... Is this capability a standard off the shelf aggressor module or an Enbridge? Well, this uh, the 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 um, we 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 can create forms and then use the intelligent to pick the information of already fully approved trans workflow uh, for that specific form and then call a server process. Now, the, the 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 capability that we are bringing with our smart solution development or smart solution department of development is the ability to create bespoke server processes in which then can create can call this uh, extra this this extra logic not restraining on into standard um to standard server processes um we have another question um this time from nick can you advise what the advantages disadvantages of ag16 versus using act for customization would extensive use of ACT introduce difficulties with upgrades, for example? So again, over to you, Tiago. Okay, now um, the advantages and disadvantages. Now the AG16 end up being a really powerful tool and I really like to use the AG16s, especially for uh, reporting. So you do have a lot of options on the AG16s and you can create a really cool um, data set. But when it comes to change or handle or update the data inside Agresso, it's always better to use uh, the existing business logic. Like with, uh, in example, with ACT, we, um, we, when we had the ACT training, the, the, the API gave us access to a specific endpoints. So Agresso provides us uh, with support of using specific uh, methods and and tools on 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 the API so that we can use in that we we don't eat, we we only have to worry about how we are gonna get things working because after that the logic that the API has is going to uh, is is going to always exist and is always going to be maintained by by Unit Four. For example, if we're going to use this uh, form extension pack regarding the position, I'm just Putting, I'm just using ACT to use that web service. Now, even that other versions of, of the same web service in the upcoming Unit 4 always supports the old versions of, 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 um, of, of, of web services in this case. So in, in ACT, you can, uh, you can do more, it, it can be more secure to validate several things in the system in which the AG16 only allows you when when it, when it comes to inserting or updating information on the database. The AG16 only allows you to quickly run uh, uh, updates uh, on on the table. So if you know everything by heart, you know if you know the tables by heart or the process by heart, that might be good. The thing is that what happens when uh, Unit Four just updates uh, some tables or some some columns. You know, I was part of a, of a solution of a user load tool, which is just looking at the tables, and then they simply just from one one platform to the other. I think it was from five 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 three to five six. The platform change, and they end up changing the tables and the names of some uh, some fields on the tables, in which the solution simply stopped working, and we just changed that for uh, using the web services, in which there's a continuity for them to um, to um, to use. Uh, the other thing that I just want to highlight in here is that. Every time we end up doing an ACT solution, we end up uh, providing support for the customer on that solution itself. A little bit like, let's say that you hire uh, a, a, a Enbridge to do a pack of reporting. So you ask us to do some, you know, purchase orders, some, some, some reporting, the reminder letters, a lot of reporting. And then you, you upgrade your version from 5.6 uh, to 5.7 or milestone 5 to milestone 6. And then you go and test your reports to see if they work. If they don't work, you might have to adapt and not do something. 
This ends up being the exact same thing, but we, we already have this structure prepared uh, so that we can provide support and continuity for the solutions on ICT, just the same way as we provide support for the um, for the reporting. And one last thing, just to, to finish this uh, subject, all the solutions that we do in ACT, they're going to work on the top of the existing ones. Like if I'm if if we have like a screen, let's say that we have the purchase order screen, and you want us to add a little bit of logic on this screen. Like okay, let me validate a couple of fields before the user presses the save button or when the user presses the save button, let's validate this field and validate that field over there, you know, just prevent the users from saving something that we don't want. Okay, now if something is going wrong with the customization, you can always go to the act setup and turn the customization off. So the customizations end up working on the top of the existing uh, of the existing logic, creating like an extra layer. So if something's not okay, or if you want to test, or if you want to debug, or, or if you want to, or something's not working okay, you want to just make sure that it's or it's not the solution. You can just go to Act Setup and turn the solution off or the, the customization off, and then you end up having the standard screen working. So this is how things end up working. But as I said, we end up always um, give support for the solutions that we end up developing. Tracy? Thanks, Tiago. Uh, we have a, a few more questions. Uh, they're coming thick and fast. Um, so let me just see where we've, we've answered up to. Um, OK, at what stage in this through the development life cycle have any performance or management issues been identified with the bespoke server processes is that a question that we can we can answer right now at what stage sorry i'm 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 afraid i'm not understanding in what I suppose what I, I suppose what um, what Sarah is asking is um, once we've developed the the solution have there been issues going forward is that uh, Sarah if you could just clarify your question and, and um, let me know if that's what you're you're looking for the answer for so whether we've found any issues uh, following the development of, of these bespoke server processes. Okay, because that's correct. Yes. So uh, okay. Um, this is ready. okay. So um, this solution right now is being uh, is being developed and unit tested. So there's a there's a, a one tiny last step, which end up being quality assurance, uh, in which is um, well the solution is 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 developed and it's been tested, and there's a Q and A that needs to be done just to try to identify any extra uh, any extra issues. Um, so it can be so it can be released. So it's just an internal quality assurance that we need to do. There's already documentation. It's kind of written in our um, you know our our kind of solution passport software that we have. We end up having a software that end up um, that end up managing and and um, kind of. Um, maintaining the life cycle of the solution so right now this is what we call the the, uh, the beta beta stage so it's in point three beta stage uh is going to be a release candidate in the next uh in this month or the next month with proper documentation so that then people can just uh test it we we can provide it with a with a with a 30-day license so that people end up having a full working solution for 15 or 30 days and then make some you know test runs on their test environment so that they they are happy with the with the with the outcome and uh yeah so this is where with the stage yeah yeah i mean uh, as tiago earlier said that obviously any work that we do um, as a development partner, we provide um, support and maintenance for, and that's part of the, the package that you would, would buy. So again, um, you do have access to um, our support desk um, once you've purchased um, any of our smart solutions. Um, we, um, we do give you um, that as a, a, as a service as part of, of that process. Um, I've got one further question, Tiago. I'm not sure whether we've covered this already, so um, 
please do say if we have, are the Aggresso APIs available to be called from AG16 or only available from ACT? Is that a question we've already answered or? Uh, the APIs are, uh, the APIs can only be called by, uh, by ACT bespoke server. Pro well, the, the, the ACT platform provides you some acts that then are consumed within the act development, which is done with C sharp. So if you're going to create a new screen or, or make an existing uh, or making changes on an existing screen, you're going to create a new DLL. And that DLL is going to provide the business logic, and that's all. That's going to be written on on C sharp language. So you end up creating an extension for a specific screen. So you you open your Visual Studio. You have to consume specific methods and specific um, specific methods and specific classes, and then create your business logic on C sharp. And at G sixteen, you only you are only allowed to do some um, SQL. Even that you have that a uh, a a SQL. Um, language from uh, from aggressor that allows you to do a lot of stuff but you cannot send c sharp commands or actually uh, implement everything via the ag16 so the apis if it's a new or changing an existing screens or if it's a new server process or a, a changes or an extension extension on an existing server process everything needs to be done with uh, with act Okay, thank, thanks, uh, Tiago. Um, we have got a couple of questions actually that we're going to take offline um, straight after this session. So I, I would like to, to just say to people that if you do have questions that are uh, that you don't want to share or, or you want to, to go over after the session, then both myself and, and Tiago are happy to uh, to have a conversation with you. Uh, following this this webinar, um, we we've got another question that's just come up. Uh, let me just have a quick look. Does taking, say, a position um, MF population tie you into a specific build of a form, i.e., how much flexibility is left on the form design? Is that something we can answer right now, Tiago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that's that's uh, when we created this uh, business form. Business world form extension pack. I end up we end up creating the whole process, you know, from the uh, from the creation of the form all the way down to the bespoke server process that end up getting the rest of the of the logic. But actually, the core thing in here and in the trick and the dynamism in here is in the bespoke server process. Okay, so the rest I just did standard aggressive stuff all the way up to the bespoke server process. Now if um, if you guys want, if you guys, or if you, some of the customers already have, uh, let's say forms with stuff being used, uh, you know, with forms with, in, with information, with fields that go on workflow. And if that information, if they think, okay, we would like an extension of my existing forms, uh, we want an extension and want to create something out of this. Uh, and then it's it's it's. I think we just need to evaluate what the forms, uh, uh, what the fields of the forms are. What do you want to do with with information? So what do you want to create? Evaluate if we have a way of uh, with existing business logic to populate that either web services or the data loaders or the batch input ones or whatever. Uh, make sure that we have at least the mandatory fields. You know, for instance, on this um, business in this position master file that we have, there were some key uh, fields that need to be populated because the web service need those those like the like the the, the position ID um, and some other fields that are mandatory. So if you already have your form. And if you say, okay, I have this form, I have this information, I want to have, I want to do something with it. Okay, we just need to, we just need to know what do you want to do with it, and then we can just create a bespoke. The cool thing with the bespoke server processes and the APIs that allow us to handle, to call, to do multiple things. We can link different processes, so you can trigger several things in Aggresso. Uh, as long as we don't have, and we always try to run away from as long as you don't have to do direct um, inserts or updates directly on the database 
then there's a, a, a whole world of, of possibilities that we can we can do because we can um, we, we, we can generate files we can read files we can call other uh, legacy systems so when we're creating a bespoke server process we end up using the the, the, the API uh, the, the act framework using the APIs and there's a lot of things we can do with code and uh, with uh, with uh, with dot net code so it's it's kind of if he, you know the .NET code associated uh, with uh, with uh, with the existing business logic and associating with the data, there's a whole a new world of possibilities that we can uh, we, that we can do. That that sounds uh, excellent, Tiago. And um, you know we we are working towards adding more solutions to our smart solution uh, packages. Um, so if there are aspects of Agresso or Unit for Business World, as I should say, um, that you feel that there could be slight tweaks or areas that you'd like to see improvements on, then we're all ears. We we would really like to hear from you in terms of uh, small tweaks, customizations that we can build um, on uh, your behalf, um, etc. Uh, yes. There's just one question in here in the middle that I just want to pick up from Andrew Malcolm. Are all bespoke web services written on a site by site basis? I'm looking for a better understanding on the implementation process. Okay, let me just say that the web services that we are using are standard aggressive web services. So just like I showed you on the management console, that like 20 or 20 something SOAP web services from Aggresso. So this, I'm not creating any new web service or we are not extending any existing web services. So this is standard Aggresso web services that you can use. So basically the web services end up being uh, a back end, you know, the back door end to send information. Let's say that you have, I don't know, you have like this other legacy system or you have some biz talk and you want to shove information inside of Aggresso and then you can use the web services, just a, a pure machine to machine communication in which you don't have to send files, you don't have to do anything. So it's just pure HTTP communication. You make a call, you send your information, the web service goes, fetch that information and then uses the exact same logic as the logic that Aggresso has built in from the front end. Like for instance, I'm using the position, um, the position web service. And when I'm, when I'm, when I'm populating the position web service and, and making that call, it's using the exact same logic as if I was on the front of the system, populating those fields and pressing the F12. Now, Aggressor right now has like 20 or something SOAP web services. They are creating much more web services from Austin 7 in, in, in RESTful. So because right now there's a lot of integration ideas and all that, then you have all these uh, new um, um, concepts of uh, Internet of Things and connecting stuff. And, and, and so they end up creating much more uh, web services, in this case RESTful. So, so uh, you know, it can be communicating with other systems being there, you know, legacy systems or being it um, handheld de devices in this case, like mobile phones. So all the mobile applications that Unit 4 has, there's, there's not much inside the application itself. So actually the application is just a front end to send and receive information from the web services. So, uh, for, so for, for answering here, we just need to activate or publish those web services because the, all those web services come with Aggresso itself. So you don't need any extra license. So you just need to select them and publish them and they'll be up and running and, and ready to consume. Thank you. Thank you, Tiago. Uh, I think that actually draws our question and answer uh, to a, a close. Uh, I don't think there's any other questions coming forward. Um, I've just provided you with a link for our next webinar, uh, which is uh, uh, Take a Bigger uh, Bit, uh, which we'll preview on Monday the 24th of April. Uh, that particular webinar is, is looking at uh, 32 to 64 uh, reporting upgrading. So if you want to register for that event, please do so. There's a, a link uh, that has just been shared with you. I'm also going to share a feedback form um, with you. If um, you could take a moment, there's only a few questions, but if you could take a moment um, just to um, answer uh, and give some feedback on our webinars, we, we like to try and improve where we can. So if you could take a, a moment um, to provide us some webinar. And um, really, I'd like to, to say 
thank you very much for for joining us um if you have any further questions or you'd like a, a one to one session uh please drop me um an email or respond on the chat button um right now we do have a, a call um with a um somebody that has attended um who wants to to take this further and has some more questions tiago so we can pick up with that person um offline but um yeah. if that's all the um the questions i'd like to say thank you very much to tiago for presenting to us today and thank you to all the attendees um that took the time to uh, to come and join us this morning so thank you very much everybody and uh without further ado uh we'll uh, we'll actually end the the webinar now thank you thank you